Now to the war in Ukraine. Fighting rages in the country's eastern Donbass region as Ukrainian troops are holding out inside a key industrial city. Russian forces have blown up the bridges and ordered those remaining to, quote, surrender or die. CBS's Chris Livesay is on the ground in Ukraine. With Russian forces closing in, the people of Donbass flee for their lives. When will Putin be satisfied, Oksana cries. Where should I go? Where will I sleep at night? In Severodonetsk, a linchpin in the region, the Russian military blew up this bridge, trapping around 10,000 people inside. To save them and others, Ukraine is pleading for more weapons, 1,000 drones, 500 tanks, and 1,000 howitzers. Heavy artillery to tip the balance, says Joe Goddard, a former British soldier now training Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are running out of the artillery. The Russians can keep it up longer than the Ukrainians can. We could start seeing the front line coming back the other way. That long-range artillery is also critical to protecting Ukraine's food. Russia continues to attack the country's water and crops. While Russia's naval blockade in the Black Sea has left some 25 million tons of grain to rot in Ukraine's ports, most of it earmarked for developing countries like South Sudan. Today, citing skyrocketing global food costs, the World Food Program announced it was slashing aid to the impoverished African nation. We have taken the painful step to suspend food assistance to 1.7 million people. And these are people that are experiencing emergency and crisis levels of food insecurity. And South Sudan isn't the only developing country to suffer. The World Food Program normally sources about half of its grain from Ukraine. But now, because of Putin's blockade, it's warning that millions of people around the world will die. Nora. Chris Livesay, thank you.